In the Grand Cherokee project that I'm currently working on, I've already made my tweeter pods for the front of the vehicle, but now I need to make a mounting solution for these three inch mid-range speakers. So how do I go about making a custom set of A-pillars? In this video, I'm gonna show you how I start with coming up with a good plan. I'm going to show you how I come up with a design for the speaker rings, and I'm gonna answer the question, why do I have three different rings per speaker? I'm also going to show you guys how I cut those rings. Without further ado, my friends, let's design, build, and install. First things first here, I need to come up with a solid plan. Adding these speakers to the A pillars is something that's gonna take a little bit of engineering work, so I wanna spend the time really thinking through everything make sure I have all my bases covered. So this is obviously the A-pillar. I know I want the speaker in this approximate location here on both sides of the vehicle. So to kind of get a feel for what it's going to look like, I want to actually position the speaker that I'm using here. So what speaker am I using? None other than this bad boy right here, this three-inch mid-range speaker. This is Focal's three-inch mid-range that is part of their K2 power lineup. This mid-range comes with the three-way component set. And in the advantage of using this speaker is it has good off-axis response, which means we don't have to aim the speaker directly at our listening position for it to sound good. We can aim it away like so, which is going to come in handy for mounting these. This is handy because in the vehicle, I don't have to worry about aiming them directly at the listening position, which is going to result in this big monstrosity that sticks off of the A-pillar. I can have it more like this, where it makes sense and it looks good it's still going to sound good. I do need to work around this air vent right here. I believe it actually comes back and then goes down and it obviously takes up some room behind the panel. So I need to figure out how much room, how much I can inset this speaker. So I'm gonna take this pillar off and I'm going to investigate. As I expected, here's this duct here, and you can see if the panel sits right here, it sits right behind that panel. So really not much clearance for the speaker to set down inside. It's going to be okay because like I mentioned, I can keep this aiming quite a bit off axis. I'm gonna cross over and hand over to the tweeter far before this really starts beaming. Keeping your speakers from beaming is really important for sound quality within a vehicle. If you wanna learn what I'm talking about when I mention beaming, check out this video up in the corner of the screen. I also determined while investigating behind the panel here that there is a side curtain airbag that carries up over the door here. I'm going to make sure that no matter what I do with my design here, it's not going to prohibit this airbag from working like it's designed to. So there is a little bit of a clearance here, maybe about an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to hold the speaker in position and put down a strip of tape. Right now, I'm imagining the material that I'll be stretching over my speaker mounting ring to the OEM panel. I'm imagining where it's going to have to go underneath the speaker and where it's going to flow from this area here up to the top, just to kind of get an idea of the shape. And it will be nice because sitting here and the same for the driver's position, it doesn't get in the way of the windshield like that. It's nice and tucked away. I put a little bit bigger piece of tape down and then I put the panel back on. And here I can line up with the edge of this tape and really start to get a feel for this position. So I know, I know, it took me a while to come up with the position, but I really wanna make sure that I think ahead in my process and make sure that nothing is going to come up and surprise me. Using the tape and repositioning, rechecking is what I found works good for me. So now I need to move on to the next part of my planning process, and that is coming up with a design for the speaker rings and the metal mesh and the cover plate that's going to go over this speaker to give it a nice finished look. Let's go my friends to the design station. So here we are at my computer design station and I start this process with taking a bunch of measurements of the speaker itself. Taking those measurements allows me to make this computer model that you see here. Now you'll notice in the model that I didn't take the time to model the cone or the different basket structure in the back of the speaker here. And that's because it's really not important to my design. I just want to get the overall footprint, the envelope of this speaker. So the important design features like the outer diameter, the cutout diameter for it to fit into the ring, the mounting diameter, and then this guy here, this sticks up out over that surface. So I also wanted to capture that as well. So you can see that there. So now that I have the speaker modeled, I can start modeling each of my rings. I started with modeling a mounting ring, 
and then I made what I call an insert ring, which is going to actually cover up the mounting hardware here on the speaker. I then created a flush ring, which basically that insert ring will sit inside of, and this flush ring will also adhere to the fiberglass materials as I stretch the fleece over and make my shape on the A-pillar. I'm going to turn on a cross section so that we can really see how this thing is going to come together. So here is my insert ring, this kind of like yellowish color. You can see how that's gonna cover the mounting hardware that's part of the speaker here in pink. Here's my flush ring that that's going to sit down inside. And I have a nice precise gap between these two rings that will allow for the material thickness that I'm going to wrap the A-pillars in. I'm gonna be using a thin headliner type material to give it a nice finished look. And it's going to wrap around this surface and down into this crack here. So I wanna make sure that I have a nice gap perfectly sized for that so that this ring can press fit. You'll notice that there's another gap here between the top surface of the speaker and the underside of this ring, and that's going to be to allow for a formed metal grill mesh that I'm going to put over the speaker in order to protect it. Now that's all well and good, but I started looking at this design and I started to think to myself, you know what, this overall diameter of the ring, so in other words from here to over here, that's pretty large. It actually ended up being about like four and a quarter inches, which is substantially larger than the speaker, and it's gonna take up a lot of real estate. So I got to thinking, is there a way that I could possibly still have this same design, but get rid of the thickness from basically right here to right here? So to do that, I came up with this right here. This is version 2.0, and this is why it really pays to kind of design ahead of time. So now my overall diameter, if we take a measurement here, is 3.75 inches, considerably smaller. I still have this flush ring here. I still have this insert, and what it's going to do is it's just going to sit right on top of the speaker. I still have this little clearance gap that I'm going to make using a rabbiting bit on the router that will allow for that metal mesh to fit in there. I still have this nice perfect gap here for my actual material that I'm wrapping everything with. I like this plan a lot better. It's nowhere near as large outside the diameter of this speaker. So we're gonna be able to save room and make it look really good. So this is what we're going with. I'm gonna start exporting all of this geometry in two dimensions so I can start making my cuts on the laser machine. So here we are at the laser. It's a little noisy because the exhaust fans are running, but I wanted to show you this material that we're gonna be using. This is quarter inch thick black acrylic that I'm gonna be cutting. I've got the files set up in my software. I did a little bit of a test cut on this first one just to make sure that the settings are good to go because with a laser, there's a lot of different settings that you need to set up and control in order to get a good cut. Let's get into the cutting process in just a second here, but really quick, I wanna say a thank you to our monthly channel sponsor, New Concepts. When it comes to car audio wiring and connection accessories, my go-to source is New Concepts. Their power wire comes in a wide variety of different sizes and colors to match any application. For RCA signal wires, they have all sorts of different options based on your budget, how many channels you need, and the length of the wire. They also have a full lineup of different battery terminals, fuse blocks, and distribution blocks. Definitely consider them for your next system, and you can check them out at newconcepts.com or at the link down in the video description. So this particular laser that I'm using that I'll give you guys more information about down in the video description, it gives us a live view of the bed here. So I've positioned my cut over here. I wanna just cut one first before I cut multiple, just because I inset the two different rings together, hoping I can save some material and hoping that this is going to cut okay. Let's see what happens. With my power and speed settings dialed in, it tells me it's gonna take three minutes and 15 seconds. Let's hit the button. Boom. There we go, it's all done. Let's take a look here. So I removed the protective paper and here are my three rings that I made. This is the mounting ring. So the speaker goes in that. The tolerance on that ring is really good. It's so nice and snug that it just holds itself in place. I'll obviously be drilling and tapping in a later video, but then we have this ring here, which is our flush ring that goes around the outside of the speaker. I'll be using some acrylic cement to adhere that thin ring to the bottom ring. And then I have our insert ring here that I need to do a little bit of modification on the router. I'll add some chamfers so these corners aren't as hard. But this piece here is going to be an insert 
that will press fit in. It will have the grill mesh attached to it. That way we can remove it if we need to in order to remove the fasteners to take the speaker out. In fact, let's add this little mini chamfer to this insert piece right now. Out of all these bits, I know I wanna do this guy here. I wanna do a chamfer, but this is a small ring, so I need something small. This ought to do it right here. This is a mini chamfer. You can see a quarter inch shank. It's got that real tiny bearing on there. Let's get this loaded in. You can see that top left corner, how it's chamfered off, and also around the inside of the ring, that is chamfered too. Here we go, here's a good shot of it. I'll just let you guys check it out. Oh baby. In the next video, I need to mount these rings to the A-pillar and I need to start the forming process to get my shape. To see that video and my future videos, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Don't forget to check out new concepts for your wiring and wire distribution needs. A special thanks to Bernard, William, Marcos, Michael, Steve, Emmanuel, Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. Design, build, install. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you soon.